But a lot of us in healthcare are noticing that the ongoing impacts of various parts of climate change are, are hurting our patients. And it's not just the extreme weather events, because although those can cause injuries and deaths, and often do, it's the ongoing heat and the air pollution. It's the growing scarcity of fresh, healthy food and clean water. It's, the, it's infectious diseases we never thought we'd see. And it's mental health impacts that can affect any one of us given the wrong circumstances. Now, any one of these impacts by themselves, or as they usually occur in combination, can aggravate pre-existing conditions. But as we're learning with childhood asthma and air pollution, they can cause those illnesses as well. Now, not everybody's equally vulnerable. You probably have heard that the most vulnerable amongst us are the elderly, the poor and uninsured, the chronically ill and overweight, minorities, and then two patient groups which really sit at the nexus of my practice and yours, pregnant moms and newborns. Our study in JAMA in 2020 and many others that have followed since then have highlighted what appears to be a very strong cause and effect relationship between heat and two types of air pollution tied to the burning of fossil fuels and preterm birth, low birth weight, and stillbirth. And I don't have to tell this audience just how serious those birth outcomes are. As far as newborns are concerned, even I know that those little people are not just small adults. And the World Health Organization told us that, uh, this was back in 2022, that uh, one out of every 10 early childhood deaths was due to air pollution, and 20% of newborn deaths are related to air pollution, probably by way of their, that connection to preterm birth and low birth weight. And it's not just our patients that are suffering. It's also our facilities. It's the clinics and hospitals where you work that are seeing more patients who are more sick, and they're seeing them more often. And that puts added pressure on staff and on supply chains. And it makes it harder and harder to deliver high quality care. And then you have to throw in the added specter of an extreme weather event because a fire or a flood or a big storm can cut off access to your hospital. It can damage the hospital. It can cut off power. It can even force emergency evacuations. And you don't even have to be in the bullseye because if another hospital that you depend upon in your network is knocked out, guess who gets overwhelmed taking care of their patients? And it goes beyond that because it's not just our patients and our facilities, it's also our own communities and our families. If you've got kids, if you have elderly parents, if somebody has a chronic illness, it probably falls on you as the doctor in the family to make sure they get the kind of care that they need. 